By breaking a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, a yoke of iron I will place on the necks of all these nation, nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. Even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have raised false confidence in this people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Lord, teach me your statutes. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes that I be, that I be not put to shame. Lord, teach me your statutes. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on the on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. He said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Imagine, after hearing that your best friend or a good friend of yours was beheaded, died, you want to go off by yourself to think about it, to grieve, to be sad. And even in our lives, if one or two people were to bother us at that time, we'd get pretty angry. 
Just say, leave me alone. But yet 5,000 plus followed Jesus when he tried to get away after learning of John the Baptist's death. And did he tell them to go away? Did he tell them, don't bother me? No, he ministered to them. He served them with compassion, cured their sick, and continued to recognize. And so the disciples see that. So you better send them away. It's getting dark. They're going to get hungry. They're in a deserted place. And the nearby villages would not be able to handle 5,000 people at once coming looking for food. Because you and I think, let's do it the easy way. Quick, quick, get them out of here. Quick, move them along. Rather than compassionately serving those who are in our midst. So what does Jesus say? Give them some food yourselves. Oh, they must have thought, this Jesus is crazy. But yet, the little that they had, Jesus was able to feed them. And the little that we have, the little time, a little compassion in our work, on our street corners, in the grocery stores, gas stations, wherever it might be, that we might be pushed to the limit. If we just take a deep breath, take time, and pray for patience, endurance, wisdom, and compassion, then we put the effort into working through things. Because as the prophets we heard in the first reading today, what they asked did not come down immediately from God. It takes time to work through. It takes time for the Lord to work. It takes time for the good to come. And as Jeremiah says, a prophet who prophesies that peace is recognized as truly sent by God. But those from of old, the prophets who were before you and me, prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against many lands and many kingdoms. We do not find peace through violence. Peace comes from the heart. Peace comes from the compassion of our God. And so in our world today, we pray for peace. But that means that we, too, need to change. We, too, need to find that compassion, the effort to be able to do as Jesus did, even in the midst of our difficulty, in the midst of grief, in the midst of challenges in life, to find that compassion to serve others. So as Jeremiah prayed, let us pray, too, for patience, for endurance, and for wisdom. And let's stand and offer our prayers. We pray for the church that throughout the world we may continue with open doors to serve those who come into our midst and not push them away, but welcome them with open arms. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for our world that through the intercession of the Blessed Mother that many compassionate people throughout the world continue to serve those who are in need, those who hunger, those who grieve, seeking the Lord in their lives, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for our nation that we continue to discern the goodness that God has provided for us and how we share that with others, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for our community to recognize the call to service that each of us are, to bring the Lord with us into life, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the many who have asked for our prayers, that they find what they are praying for, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who have died. May they be forgiven of their sins and welcomed into God's eternal kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear the prayers that we bring to you this day, knowing that you grant to what we ask for in faith, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extend your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And let us offer to one another a humble sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for joining us here for the Eucharist. Those of you here present, those joining us by live stream. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a blessed afternoon.